I'm going to show you how to perform a linear search. In other words, how to search through a linear list. In my vb.net application, I have a form with a text box and a button. I'm keeping it very simple. My text box I have called txt find. That's where the user will type in what they're looking for. And here I have a button which I've called btn linear search. So let's take a look at the code behind the button. I'll tuck these windows out of the way. And here you can see the first thing I'm doing is declaring the array. I'm calling the array st names. And I'm giving it the dimension 9. Now that's going to give me an array of 10 elements numbered from 0. By default, arrays in vb.net are 0 based. In other words, counting starts from 0. And then here you can see I'm assigning a value to each element of that array. I'm hard coding it, which is suitable for the purposes of this demonstration. But that data might be captured in a different way in a real system. And here's the code where I'm performing the linear search. The first thing I've done is declare a variable called stfind into which I'm putting whatever the user typed into that text box. I've got a Boolean variable called bfound, which I'll set to true if we find what we're looking for. And here's my for loop. I'm counting from 0 to 9. So this is going to iterate through every item in that array. As I visit an item, I ask the question, is the current item equal to stfind? First time through the loop, this is going to be a zero. So I'm asking if the first element of the array, in this case, stan, is equal to stfind. If it isn't, we carry on round the loop. I count is incremented, and then I examine the next item. And this continues, examining each item in the array. If a particular item does indeed equal stfind, then we set our Boolean variable to true, and we can stop searching. There's no need to look at the rest of the items, so we exit the for loop. Once we're out of the loop, we can then just test bfound. If bfound is true, we can report that we found what we're looking for. Otherwise, we can say it wasn't found. That's a simple linear search. Let's see it in action. So first of all, I'm going to look for Kevin. Kevin not found. And now I'm going to look for Bart. And Bart is in there. Here's an enhanced version of my linear search program. Let's see it in action first of all. I'm going to initialize the array. I can see here the array is populated. And if I search for an item that is in the array, let's say Maggie, it will tell me so. If I search for an item that isn't in the array, I'm invited to add it to the list. If I say yes, that's been added to the list. So next time I search, I will find Kevin. So how's this done? The first change I've made is to declare the array at the form level. I've done this because I want its data to persist while the form is running, so that any new items I add are there next time I do a search. I've also declared it as a dynamic array. I want to be able to add more data to this array when I need to. I've included a button called Initialize Array. You saw that in action a moment ago. And what that will do is give the array a dimension and put the initial data in there. So there's my set of names that I had originally and a little message to say that that's been completed. When I perform the search, it's similar to what I did before. I have a Boolean variable to record that I found what I'm looking for just like I did before. I have a variable called stfind, into which I'll capture whatever the user types into the text box. And I've done a couple of other little things here as well. I've removed case sensitivity. You can see I've wrapped this up inside uCase, and I've wrapped this up inside uCase as well. 
so I'm comparing the uppercase version of ST find with the uppercase version of an item in the array. Down here, I test be found. If it's true, if I found what I'm looking for, I do the same as I did before. I say so. If I don't find what I'm looking for, I'm now using message box as a function to capture some user input. So you can see I'm feeding the message box command an extra parameter, which puts the yes no buttons onto it. Whatever the user selects will be loaded into I reply. And then I test it. If I reply equals VB yes, the user does want to add this item to the list. I redimension the array and I add the new item. Notice I'm using read in preserve because I don't want to flush the array. I want to keep what's in there already. And the value I need to put in here is the current size of the array plus one. So you can see I'm taking U bound, the current size of the array, and I'm adding one to it. So the array is big enough and I can take the data and I can load it into the upper element of that array. Job done. Now I just want to finish off by showing you how you can watch the contents of this array growing as you add new items. So the first thing I'm going to do is set a breakpoint. It's around about here where I add new items, so I'll put a breakpoint here. Now I'll start the program running, initialize my array, and try searching for something that I know is not in there. Should I add it to the list? Yes, please. OK, I'm going to switch on one of my watch windows. I can have up to four watch windows. So I select watch and in here I simply type the name of the array variable or indeed any variable whose contents I wish to examine. Let's get the spelling right. And if I just expand this out, I can see the current contents of the array. Now, as I continue to step through the program, I can see already now that once redim has executed, the array now has a length of 11. If I keep stepping, I can see now that Sue has gone into element number 10. Let's add another one. Jim, I know he's not in there. Should I add him to the list? Yes, please. Stepping through the code, I'm told he's in the list. And indeed, there he is, item number 11.